I want to do another update on my sub-irrigated raised bed. Let's take some time and just look at the plants and you can see how the growth is progressing. Here it is. These are the pepper plants and you see how tall they've gotten. They've completely filled in this PVC frame and making some nice peppers now. So that's exciting. I had had back in this area ground cherries, just crazy ground cherries. Uh, the branches from the two plants filled in this entire area and it was just a dense jungle. So I hacked that stuff up and pulled it all out and let me show you because I'm stepping on it right now. Look at all of this growth, how long <laughs> these branches were from these ground cherry plants. And so if we come around to this other side, you see the watermelons that are finally having a chance. They've got a shot at it here. They're setting some fruit. I only have a couple of months till my expected first frost, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. The largest watermelon so far is only this big, so I don't know if I have enough time to have a nice ripe watermelon or not, but I'm going to find out. After having already pruned this back and cut back a lot of growth, you can still see how crazy this thing is, how excellent the, the vegetation is, and we've got some good fruit setting and everything else. So this box is definitely doing its job. It was able to support plant growth even through the very rainy period in June. And now that we've had like no rain and it's been very hot, the plants are not really affected at all. They're just thriving and watering this particular setup is not a chore by any means. My fill tube over here it right there and so I'm going to show you what I do to fill this up. These are so great in that you can just turn that lever and let go and then the water just keeps coming out and so for an application like this it's perfect. Turn it on maybe maybe around medium you know not full blast but it doesn't have to be a slow trickle and it just starts filling up filling up. So right now I can walk away, I can do other things, look at other things, and that reservoir is just getting pumped full. And so now what happens, we have corrugated perforated drain pipes that run in this direction, and that, that fill tube is connected to one, so the water immediately goes into the one, goes all the way down. Now that corrugated pipe is not connected to the other pipes, they're just sitting next to each other. But you've got all this distance that that pipe spans, so it has those little holes in it, and that's enough over that long distance for water to easily seep out and go to the next pipe, to the next pipe, to the next pipe. And even though there's soil in between there, it's a nice porous mix, plenty of pore space for the water to just flow right through and level out, equalize very quickly and very efficiently with no problems. So you don't have to have the pipes wrapped up like a serpent or like a coil. That way the water can travel and, and consistently cover the whole area. But how do you know whenever this is filled up? You only need one fill tube, but I recommend having on a box like this at least two overflow tubes. Those overflow tubes are how you'll know when the reservoir is completely full. If you see water starting to trickle out of here, some little drips, it's full and you can just stop. Now, this one is on the exact opposite caddy corner of where the fill tube is. And there is one that's closer to where the fill tube is down on this other side. But that one, although water starts to trickle out of it just a little bit sooner, we're talking like a matter of seconds and before you know it, this one has water trickling out of it too and that's how you know that the water has dispersed throughout the entire base of the box and um, that's all you need to do if you want to have that completely filled. What I have found though is that I usually don't fill up that reservoir all the way. I might 
put a couple gallons of water in it from time to time but I don't like religiously do it on a daily basis making sure it's totally full you don't have to do that one thing that I do though is from time to time I'll just spritz the top of the soil because I've chosen not to use a uh, layer of plastic in here and so I'll just kind of like wet the top of the soil to make sure that you don't get too much dryness I mean if there's a quarter of an inch of a dry layer and then it's very moist underneath that's fine but by doing this I'm able to keep it that way so that it doesn't get excessively dry um, for any reason and this is such a simple thing to do it's also nice because then you can kind of get a better look at what's going on but aside from that that's all that I do to water this and it's very simple if you're trying to get a feel for whether or not this actually has to be watered, you can kind of put your finger in there, dig down, and see if you can feel some moisture. If it feels very dry, then yeah, you want to hit it with some water. I've shown this in another video, and this is definitely an option to put in a little meter and start going down to see, okay, how moist is this? The plants are doing all right, but they will start to run out of water if I neglect this. A common thing that I'm asked is how often do you have to water a system like this? That's something that's going to be different for each person and it's going to be different at different points of the year. Has it rained? This captures rainwater. That's going to be a factor. How big are your plants? If they've put out a lot of growth, then all that vegetative mass is going to be transpiring moisture. So it's going to be sucking up and releasing a lot of water as the plants get bigger and bigger. It's going to be more and more. Then too, what are the temperatures? What have the light levels been? Has it been cloudy? Has it been really sunny? How windy has it been? What about the humidity levels? All of these things are going to make it so that on some days, this thing is releasing a lot of water quickly and on other days not so much. You'll get a sense for what your plants need, what they're doing. As long as you don't neglect this, as long as you keep an eye on that soil, maybe use that soil probe, that moisture meter from time to time. Let's take a second to talk about the aeration screen in your SIP. What I have here is a city picker. This is just a retail kit from a manufacturer that is sub-irrigated and this part right here is your aeration screen and that allows for all the soil resting on it to freely drain that way it's not overly saturated and at the same time with all these holes in here there is an air pocket underneath which is able to provide oxygen to the roots that way they don't die they don't starve of air and that gives you nice healthy plants Often they're used in tandem with a plastic cover that prevents the soil surface from exchanging gases and so air can't get in through the soil surface, which makes an aeration screen even more critical for a system like this. But even if you don't cover it, this is still a vital component for maximum plant health. Notice how there's such a large area which is really devoted to drainage and aeration. And then here in the corners, you have a very small area where you stuff the soil in and it's in constant contact with water in the reservoir sucking up moisture but only in those small corners and all the rest of the soil freely drains so that provides a nice balance a large area of aeration a small area of water absorption of wicking and capillary action and that's something that you're going to find with any good system that it has a big aeration screen and a small wicking chamber or wicking basket or something like that. So whenever we make these types of sub-irrigated boxes, we want to mimic that concept where we have a lot of corrugated pipes that serve as an aeration screen and a small amount of space between them which serves as these areas, these little pockets that suck up moisture, suck up water from the reservoir. So if you see just like one or two pipes, then that would be like having only a little tiny strip or a little square of an aeration screen and everything else just resting in water. These aren't designed that way. And this is tailored after that same principle 
because that's what's going to work the best. Let me show you, I even uh, set up a little tote here and put some of these corrugated pipes in just to show you if we were to drill a hole here and have this as your overflow drain hole, the water would not be able to go past that. So that upper part serves as the aeration screen and then this bottom part is what serves as the water reservoir. If we were to take and raise the level of the overflow hole, suddenly you're going to see how most of the tube, most of this pipe is going to be submerged in water. It's going to lose its ability to freely drain the soil and to allow for oxygen to be able to reach the roots. That's why this can't be too high. Don't get greedy thinking, well, I could fit more water in there and I can be extra lazy. <laughs> like, don't do that. You're going to hold a lot of water in here. It's going to work great. But you're also going to have healthy plants. And if it rains, they're not going to drown and die. People that put that uh, tube, that overflow tube, too high, they've completely defeated the purpose of the aeration aspect of these corrugated perforated drain pipes. Basically, they've taken this and they've just pulled it out and they're using it like that and you don't want that so that's why I made the tutorial that I did to try to help people to see the right way to use this design and to be able to get the best results. Thanks for watching this update hopefully it's answered some questions that maybe you've had uh, giving you some of a better insight into sub irrigated systems how they work I want to thank all you guys for your support on my channel for all the good questions that you guys have and um, all the thumbs up that's always much appreciated also if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so I'd definitely appreciate that thanks a lot guys for watching and happy gardening